Welcome back to the Mini Town Bike Frame Build Series. In the last video, we uh, concepted this bicycle, as you can see here. It's got 20 inch wheels, and it's made for just kind of cruising around. In this video, we will take this bike into Bike CAD and start CADing. <laughs> Let's get started. Here we are in BikeCAD, and before we get started, I'd just like to say that I'm not affiliated with BikeCAD, the software. I'm not getting paid to do this, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. This is not a product placement or anything. It is kind of like a mini tutorial. I'll be showing you guys a few things, but I won't be diving deep into the software because the software is quite deep. There are many settings. Alright guys, so you might recognize this uh, frame. This is the long tail frame. And I will start from this because it has a similar top tube angle, uh, similar head tube, sorry, <laughs> top tube length, similar head tube angle, seat tube angle. Uh, the chain stays are obviously too long, but we'll be taking that, taking care of that really soon. So this, um, this is a good tip for you guys starting out. Open up an existing um, bike CAD file or look at an existing uh, frame for its geometry. All right, that's it. I'm going to show you guys something really quick. Okay, for you beginners out there, this is bike CAD, the website. And if you come into the, uh, where is it, design archive tab, this these are bikes that uh, people have designed and uploaded to share with the community. So you can like, Find the, the type of style you're looking for, and you click on a bike, and you can download this. Here it is, Open Model and Bike CAD. So, great place to start if you're starting from nothing. Uh, I highly recommend this. Okay, so uh, let's do a quick uh, UI overview, what these things mean up here. So for the most part, um, these pictures all represent uh, the controls for the various components or parts of the frame. So you see here, this is the chain, uh, the, sorry, the seat stays. So if I click on this, you can uh, adjust the lengths and all the options for the seat stays. Dropouts, fork, all that stuff. All right, next, the eye. So this, this thing here uh, will open another panel, and in here is where you kind of uh, toggle things on and off. Uh, for visibility. So let's see, if I put the wheels on, there they are. Now you see the wheels. I'm gonna turn those off. Um, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all there is to bike CAD. Um, there is one more thing. When you, um, when you get closer to finishing the design, you're gonna wanna click these guys here. Uh, I don't remember what this is. Let's click this one. I do remember this one. So this is where you kind of uh, control the different these little arrows and the numbers and the measurements this window here will toggle those on and off so uh, by going in here uh, let's see if you go to tubing yeah so see this this bottom bracket shell diameter it is showing you the diameter of the bottom bracket uh, here's the down tube so yep okay and so this tab here will toggle most of the general uh, stuff going on with the frame so this is the frame tab and so here we have the uh, yeah the, what was that the top tube down tube yep down tube length okay so one more tab this is the jig setup tab so when you're close to getting you when your frame is basically uh, done in bike CAD you are ready to set up your tubes and whatnot on your jig. So if you go to this tab, let me find the ones that I usually use. Front, center, head tube, bottom. So this one I do use, the head tube, bottom, X. So this is a measurement. Um, if you imagine my, my Arctos style jig, I have my bottom bracket set up. 
And if I were to measure right across, straight across, uh, this right here is 417.151 millimeters. So if I measure that across onto my jig, and then I were to go straight up, that's where the bottom of the head tube would, would line up. Let's work on these wheels. So remember this guy up here, we're going to toggle the wheels on. Uh, where are they? Wheels. Ah. All right. And let's now hit this guy, which is the controls to the wheels or uh, the various size. Let's see. There is one in here for uh, the tire. Here it is. That's the one. Uh, 528. So that's probably this measurement here from the outer edge to outer. So the outer diameter of the whole tire, the tire as a whole is 528 let's tr let's tune that down a little let's see what happens if i do like 500 that looks pretty good uh because the tires on this bike for the wife it's not they're not going to be that large um just large enough to be comfy but not so large where you know she's not gonna be jumping huge gaps on this bike as cool as that would be let's jump on out of here for now we're gonna close this and the next thing, let's look at the front forks. All right, so we looking at that. Oh, let's, oh, look at this. If you open the forks control panel, you can hit this, which will make the forks visible. There they are. Nice. Let's change this. So it's on custom right now, but I don't like this, sty this straight blade style fork. That so I'm going to change that. And so I'm going to go down to here. I'm going to hit standard, and then I'm going to choose... Uh, generic curved blade. That sounds pretty good. 45, 50. Don't know what that means, but I'm just going to choose one. I guess the next step here would be, or the problem we have here, is uh, this is way too tall. You know, this fork is not made for a 20-inch wheel. So what we're going to do at this point, I do have the actual physical fork. We're going to go out into the workspace and grab the fork that I have and then measure it so that we can start punching numbers in over here. So let's do that. Here we are in the shop. And uh, I'm going to get this trumpet set up. Sorry, not trumpet. Uh, fork set up on the table. The, uh, the trumpet is my daughter practicing. She's pretty new, so apologies for that. Here's the 20-inch uh, fork. It is amazingly hard finding a 20-inch fork with a disc brake mount. Uh, I suppose I could have um, uh, attached my own mount, but just finding a 20-inch fork in general that's not a BMX fork is super hard. Alright, so I'm attaching the fork to this, uh, just my welding table. It's not the flattest surface in the world, but it's good enough for this uh, application. And uh, so I got my fork set up on here and now I am measuring the um, the axle height. So it looks like I'm at 45.67. Here I'm measuring the um, steer, and it is 250, so that's what this number is here. And now I'm just like going around measuring uh, all the other things on the fork. I printed out the um, that page from Bikead, and I'm just kind of like filling in the measurements that I think are going to be needed. All right, so I actually realized that I did not um, I did not put the axle in plane with the table. So I'm doing that now, and then I will remeasure my uh, axle height. So keep in mind, the your rake, it is the um, the steerer center. The, it is the offset of the axle from your steerer center. It's not, um, it would, in this case, it would not be like the measurement from the table to the axle. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so now that I got my measurements, let's put them in place. Uh, you'll see here, these are grayed out. Again, that is because standard, we need to set that to custom. We have a measurement from the... Uh, the crown seating, so this is where the crown sits, down to here, which is the axle. And it looks like that's the letter L. So we're going to go over here to letter L, and we're going to change that to the measurement I got. And I got a 323, so we're going to type that in, 323. 
hit enter next we will do B which is the steerer diameter 25.36 enter whoa look what it did to this I guess that is pretty important huh what's the difference between B and D what is this I don't know and D 25.36 here is a fun one. We're going to do the fork rake, and that is here. It's R. And our rake is 42.77. 42, 42.77. Uh oh. Ooh, what the heck? <laughs> 42.77. Enter. What on earth is going on? <laughs> what? What the heck? That's really weird. Did I encounter a bug? Yeah, this has to be a bug. What if I put... What if I put 43? Yeah, it's fine with that. 42? It's fine with that too. You know what? We're gonna put 43, because that we're gonna round up. And we're gonna just call it a day. Close enough. That's 43. Okay? Alright. Okay, so next we're gonna do this. We're gonna we're gonna do G. We'll just go ahead and call this the fork crotch, <laughs> the inseam of the fork. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's a name for this. And anyway, the number we need here is is forty. Yay! Okay, one, two, five. Enter. Twenty-eight point. Oh, is it gonna freak out on me again? No, it's fine. Interesting. 17.7. Oh, yeah, there it is. 17.7. So, um, looks like we're good to go here. The most important measurements on this page is your fork rake and the distance here, your crown to axle. That is is pretty much those are two are pretty much your most important measurements that you need to take off whatever fork you're going to use or build or whatever and you're gonna take those numbers and punch them in here and you'll pretty much be good to go the rest of the numbers not a big deal uh, it's not gonna affect the rest of the stuff going on on the frame back here Alright, so now that I have the wheels in here and I can see them I have my fork set up with my actual physical live RL fork for real life fork. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in that concept because now I have reference. I have wheels here for reference. Okay, so here's the photo. We're gonna hit that. Oh, look at that. So I have the long tail concept in here from before. Look at this. This is pretty interesting. Already you can see differences in the long tail. Um, look at this. You see, these were their BMX forks, and these are the forks I have now. We have a lot more rake, which is nice. That's going to make, I think that's going to make the bike uh, a little less responsive, which is, which is okay. I'm not, I'm not worried about that. In fact, that's, I think that's what I want. I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, let's get an, uh, let's change the image. Um, how the heck do I do that? What's this? Hmm. There, there appear to be uh, image controls here. What? Whoa. All right. Uh, I'll close that. I don't think I need that. This toggles the image on and off. And it gives me controls. How do I change the image? And down here, there's import photo. And I can remove photo as well. Let's do that first. And then let's uh, import photo. And... Oh, look at this. We already have one. Let's do that. Nice. Okay, now we're going to change the, the scale of this photo. A little higher. 450, maybe 450. That's too much. I wish I could, like, in, like, 3D apps, you can, like, slide, and it'll kind of slide this thing up and down. I wish there was a way I could do that with the image, like, whoops. Whoa, what did I just do? Oh my god, I didn't want to do that. 
And I, I can't control Z, of course. <laughs> what if I hit control? Oh, look at that. So control, hold down control and click and drag, and you can change the scale. That's nice. What about alt? Ooh, alt change the rotation. I don't need to do that, but that's good to know. Holding alt, uh, shift. Oh yeah, that's what I that's what I wanted. One more thing I'm gonna do is I will toggle these tires off. Um, how do I do that? Where is that? That's the wheels. How do I do just the tires? Where's the tires? Show me the tires. What is this thing? Oh, interesting. What the heck? What? What is that? <laughs> tires! Where are you? No. Oh, that's cool. Huh? I just turn the wheels off, right? Turn the spokes off. Leave the spokes off for now. We don't need the spokes. Um, I wish I could toggle the tires off. That would be helpful. For now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to... This is too large, so... Okay, so 474 seems to have gotten us to a good spot. At least uh, as far as the concept is concerned. So let's close that. We are close enough now as far as wheel size. So you notice this fork is quite a bit larger and that's okay. This is the real fork and the concept is quite frankly just a concept. Um, it's just kind of like a general guide. And so with that said, um, I guess the next thing we'll do is we'll, we'll start messing with this head tube. Uh, this looks to be an integrated head tube and the head tube we need is just a, uh, it's not integrated and it's it's not as wide either uh, if you have the measurement you can go ahead and punch that in but for me I am not going to do that I'm just gonna get uh, lengths of tubes I'm not gonna mess around with the diameter yet and the reason is I have not purchased any to uh, tubes yet and after I purchase the tubes then I'll go ahead and enter the diameters of these tubes but for now I'm just gonna get the the lengths correct and the angles correct that's a good place to start. Click tubes here. This pretty much handles uh, all your tubes. All right, so here's the head tube. Uh, for now, we're just going to go ahead and remove this taper. Uh, this is more or less an integrated head tube. Uh, let's change this to constant. Did that do it? That did it. So I'm using a one inch steer, and I'm sure someone would know what head tube size that is. For now, I'm just going to put in uh, 35 mil for now, and let's see, that's good enough for that. So I guess the next thing we'll do, the quickest thing we can do is move on to the chain stays and seat stays. We need to make the chain stays, stays longer. Um, so that is over here in the frame, the frame primary dimensions, and this is where we can change the chain stays. Chain stay length, 620. Let's go ahead and just uh, punch in some numbers. 500. Yes. Shift. A little more. Let's go. Let's go four. Let's go 300. 300. Now that's possibly too much. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna move the real rear wheel back a bit. I'm gonna do uh 350. What's that look like? 350 oh yeah that's gonna do it so I was kind of shocked by how much difference there is between the concept and my fork I was so shocked by this that I actually went out into the shop and I measured to make sure I got the right measurements again and this is indeed these are the right measurements uh, and that fork I got is very similar to the BMX fork in dimensions so that only leaves me to believe this fork is is not right <laughs> the way I concepted this fork it's probably went up a lot taller you know so you know I'm not gonna worry about that next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make extend the top of the head tube and so to do that we're gonna jump over into the uh, primary dimensions 
So that is this guy right here. Let's do, what's that? That's 10, so let's try 40. 40. Whoa, that's, that's unexpected. <laughs> I see what happened here. So look, it, 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 it did extend this, but not, not in the way we thought. So I guess I do need to change, uh, <laughs> I guess I do need to change this. I don't know what I'm doing. 200. I, well, I should have just added 40 onto whatever that was. Now I don't remember. Let's try 140. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Pretty close. You'll notice, as I change these things, I am affecting the top tube angle. All right, so I typed 145. You can see we're really close. We're at 0.3 degrees. Let's try 148. 48. There we go. Okay. I like that. We need to move this up next. So let's do that. The, uh, the seat stays. Um, hmm. Is that in here? I don't think so. Let's do 130. Oh wait, that's gonna lower it, right? Yes, it did. All right, so let's do 100. Okay, maybe a little more. 30, 30, 30, 30. Okay, that looks good to me. I'm gonna leave that as it is. I think this is a good stopping point. I will um, come back to this at some point but I will spare you guys the agony of going through the whole process again and entering, you know, updating all my changes. I'll just show you how things turned out once I get actual tube sizes and once I get the dropouts and know the actual dimensions on those. Uh, but for now, what we did accomplish was pretty good. We got the um, front fork figured out, so that's got the right dimensions. We have our head tube length, that's correct. Down tube, top tube, you know, kept it the same as the long tail, uh, seat tube angle, same. We shortened the chain stays and the seat stays, I brought this junction up to meet the top tube. So that's all for now. I hope you guys learned something, uh, especially you beginners out there. I hope you got something out of this. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.